Cleveland cancer concerns, which was started in November of 2016, when we realized at Fruitmerch we had an astronomical amount of cancer in just a very small area. We, this is research that was conducted by Auburn University, the University of Alabama, and the University of Kentucky, along with a lot of community people, and several of you commissioners helped with that cancer research tremendously, and I appreciate that. One thing that we did determine is that the groundwater is contaminated. We also did survey research, and I have statistics from that. If someone doesn't mind handing them out, save me some time so I don't eat up my sleeping time. But in this data, you will see that on average, the residents of Fruitburgs are six times more likely to have cancer than the national statistics in the United States. It's very alarming. One of the statistics on there is cancer, I mean stomach cancer, and it's 13 times more likely in fruit nerves than on national average. The reason I say that is because there's still roughly 350 homes in Fruithurst area, the district that feeds Fruithurst Elementary School, that are on well water. And that most of them are on well water because there's not a main county line that runs on their county road. So they don't even have an option. They have kind of well water, and they consume it and use it for everything in their home. Um, my question is, with the spraying, and of course I'm opposed to it. If you do your research, I would think most would be. Um, when this runoff gets into the creeks and gets into the groundwater in the Fruithurst area, but anywhere in the county, those people are not going to have an option except to drink contaminated water. And we've proven it's already contaminated, so we have initial data with those well water um, tests to prove it. And we can do that and we can test again if needed. But that's, that's one of my big questions is the water contamination. The next thing I have is the chemicals are the brands that are being sprayed, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but 2,4-D, Oust, Arsenal, Roundup Custom, and something called NIS. Is that correct? Okay. Of those, and I have documents here for your leisure reading, but I can quote from this article, Roundup is more toxic than its com component, glyphosate. And that's in one of these articles here, um, the effects of Roundup and its main component. Glyphosate um, is an ingredient in Roundup and is labeled as a probable human carcinogen. That means that it's probable that it will cause cancer. And I have created another document for your reading from all of this research, and I'm going to leave this with you all, so I'm sure you would love to read it. But this is a list of the health impacts that I came across in those documents in a very short period of time. So that's, y'all can pass that around. It's a whole page. And most of them would not be very fun to have. With the areas that's being sprayed, and this is something I really want you to listen to, and my questions are, is the city limits of Heflin being sprayed? No. no. City limits of Fruithurst? No. No. What about Rambo? No. No. Of those areas, let's talk about Fruithurst being one, Heflin being one, Rambo being one, and Pleasant Road being four areas in our county. The areas you are not spraying have the least amount of poverty. The areas you are spraying have the highest amount of poverty, and that can be proven. So these people who have to depend on their well water, number one, a lot of them can't afford the $1,075 to connect to county water. We've got grants where people have been able to do that for free. But you're spraying in the most highly high poverty areas of our county but not the low poverty areas. And I know it's because the city municipalities are keeping up with their right of ways. But those people get city water or county water. All of our county does not have that option. So it's a huge health disparity that's being created. One of the questions I have and the rest of mine are questions, and feel free to ask me questions. I have another handout to show. It came from one of these articles. You'll see it if you choose to read. But how spraying does get into the groundwater. It is proven. If you don't mind that out. Question. How far is the vehicle spraying the herbicides? 14, 15 feet. Okay. Because from the document of that's public records, it says 18 feet 
horizontally, vertical height of 18 feet and 20 feet horizontally. How far is the right of way from the center of the road? On the county road, not state. Varies 50 to 40 foot from the center. 40 feet from the center line. So okay. about, that means about 30 foot of, of dirt. Okay. All right. And one of the things I came across was there should be digital and paper maps of where the spray is taking place. Do we have those? Those have been generated. They're not maps per se. It's more data points. It's, it is GPS controlled, but it's data points more than it is a digital map. Will those be made public? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you have programs to be done. Well, if I, if I have a paper copy, I'm going to have to have that. That's, that's what I'm saying. It's digital. It well, in the, in the contract, it says digital and paper will be provided. So that would be great to have for people to have. The other thing that I read in here says that when the vegetation is not to exceed 16 inches. Now, I know workers and they're spraying, they're not going to get out of their trucks to go see if that vegetation is 16 inches. Who's, who's measuring and controlling What's in this contract? That would be me. You? Okay. And uh, who determines what is sprayed versus what is mowed? Is that you? Because um, it's yes, in that would be me. Okay. Because it, it states in there in some areas you could say I'd rather this be mowed versus sprayed. It's, Not in that exact term. But. It all falls on me. Okay. All right. One question I had. Um, Measuring, I've already asked that, but it says at bridges and culverts, the width of spray required 30 feet from the bridge end, horizontally 30 feet, and ver vertically 18 feet. There again, are they just guessing at this as they go over a bridge and start the spray back, or are there measurements, are there markers? What is there to, to ensure that that takes place? It, we are not pulling tape measures and getting 30 feet exactly, so it is, I guess, Part of that, but all of these sprays that are sprayed are aquatic loads. You can be sprayed up to the edge of the banks. Um, so those are going not by not by tape measure. Okay, so just by guessing. So when we read this research and we see the health impacts, so we know that it could possibly get in the water and the creeks and the rivers in our areas, then we've got a major problem. Another question I have is it, it discusses in this contract for monitoring of the weather not to spray four hours before rain or four hours after rain. Who's controlling that and making sure that doesn't happen? That's check every day. Okay. That's, that's in the spray box. All right. One of the biggest things I have in the MSDS, it states, if eye irritation persists, get medical advice or attention. If skin irritation persists from the spray, get medical advice or attention. So when children are outside playing and sprayers come by, they don't have to be in that 30 feet right away to actually get it on their skin, get it on their clothes, get it in their eyes. Who's paying for this medical attention that's re any requested on the MSDS? Any complaints that any residence has goes through the company. They can't they handle all of that. Okay. So it doesn't need to come to you first? It does not. Two more questions. Can the county commission give Cleveland County residents a guarantee that there will be no medical impact from the spray? Don't everybody jump in at once. You can't do it, can you? You cannot do it. One of the, my most favorite quotes, and I meant to say this first, is do the best you can until you know better. Then when you know better, do better. And that, that should follow just everything we do. One question I do have is the document where the company is logging the county roads that they spray and how many miles that they spray on that road. This is from March 4th, incomplete. They put county road, they didn't put the county road number, and that they sprayed 43 miles on that county road. There's not even a county road in our county that has 43 miles. So I don't know if they're getting paid mileage or anything of that sort, but that's an incomplete in that document. I want to check on that. It's page two of the application report. My last question that I have is, I know this decision's already been made. I emailed most of you. I emailed you the video with the data from the survey of cancer research. We have too much cancer in fruit purse. And I'm not going to stand here and tell you that's probably not the case in every one of your districts. Every one of you have known somebody who's had cancer. It's horrible. 
So if we can make a decision, you know, our cancer research was retroactive. We had to go back and figure out what happened in 1988 to figure out what was causing the water contamination. But you can be proactive in this and choose not to spray. We don't have to spray. Why can't we just mow the wrong place? Yes. Is there an answer for that other than money? Is that an option? The last thing I'm going to say, and I'm going to quote James chapter 4, verse 17, to know to do good and do it not is a sin.